The song is a film about an old man who appears to have um, arrived somewhere from the Middle East, it isn't clear, um, to a European city. He is alone in an apartment that he has been allotted. He is very aware of the silence and, and the, the contrast uh, to where he's come from. So he's, what I would like to say, he's ac acoustically displaced. He wants to sing, and he finds that there's too much silence around him as he sings. So he fills um, his space with sounds. I've been very interested in migrants and their relationship with sounds from elsewhere, of the places that they've left behind. And um, I live in Berlin, I'm from Pakistan, so there's, it's a very, I think it's a very autobiographical film. But basically I notice how people create sound clouds around them as they walk around the city, kind of emotionally and um, acoustically present in different places, but walking on the streets of Berlin. One of these moments that was very inspiring for me was watching an old man sitting alone in a bus at night one night and singing full-throatedly, um, really loudly. I think he was, it was a Kurdish song. Um, and he was really not interested in who was there. Um, he was completely transported. So I was just thinking about, uh, uh, about this kind of um, space. It was almost like an architectural space of sound that he created around himself. I think that migration is actually a recent interest because it's also recent for me. I've grown up in Pakistan and even though I've lived all over the world, uh, the acknowledgement of myself as a diaspora artist or somebody who now lives permanently in Berlin, uh, it really kind of, I've had to really struggle with it. And I think that the only place where I feel at home is when you start noticing um, the lives and the details of other migrant lives. The other work I would say that it links up to, interestingly, which this film has been shown, is Memorial to Last Words, which is an archive of letters written by Indian soldiers during the First World War who were uh, fighting for the British. I worked on that project like six years ago, and that's when I started thinking about the aesthetics of displacement, about what is it exactly that people miss. And I think that is the one project with which you can one can see a, um, a very direct link and how I got interested in the idea of of sound and and memory As you watch the story, you realize that the way he finds a way out of this silence is that he starts making objects from everyday things that somehow make, make sounds. He starts listening to um, the sounds of paper bags and materials and fans and uh, cutlery and crockery, all of this stuff. And he makes these objects which are put together with duct tape and are very clumsy. And he surrounds himself with them to create a cacophony. I wanted him to make analog sound objects. That was going to be the, the release and the solution to silence. Uh, but I didn't know exactly who would make them, what they would look like, how does anyone even do this? So, but in my research, I came across Ria Nakajima, who is um, a sound artist, sculptor based in London. She was doing, has been doing for a very long time, these very uh, brilliant objects, and she's a musician. And we had her over in Berlin, and she made, made objects for the film. Ali Majid Aha, who's the actor, is not a trained actor. I know him because I know his son is an actor director in Berlin, and they moved um, from Syria more than six years ago um, to Berlin. One thing that he said was very funny was that he wanted to perform in front of his son, so to show him that he can also act. 
So there was the son was um, Ayham was on set with us, and we were constantly translating between English and Arabic. But one of the things he himself said when I told him the story and what was interesting to me about me- the memory of sounds uh, was he said, "Yes, um, you know, ever since I've moved here in Syria, I used to speak to a thousand people in a week, and uh, and now I don't." And so it was also what constitutes a social life and a com- comfort zone for him. I think that I've always been very interested in sound in um, in film, but also about a certain kind of static time. And in a lot of my work, there's moments of waiting and suspension when nothing much happens. I would say cinematically, the influences are Jean Dillman by Chantal Ackerman, and then Playtime, which is all about sound and modernity, and um, Monsieur Hulot uh, walking around, uh, figuring out the sounds of modern architecture. I would say these are the, some of the films that I've been very interested in. It was lovely to find an entire team of people, which Film and Video Umbrella identified, camera people, editors, and um, production people. It, these are like the tools with uh, whom, um, with which you can imagine the next film. That was a big shift for me because I was making things myself. And uh, sort of finding, to find expertise in the city um, was a big shift for me. And I hope it kind of influences uh, and enables future projects.